We've had the 4000 series, we've had the 5000 series, and now Corsair wants you to go big or go home. It's time for the 7000 series. Let's do this. Well, Andy, what are you watching? It's, uh, it's, it's not what you think. Wow, it's so big. Why, well, thank you. It's the new AOC AG493 UCX. 49 inches of pure performance and a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It's so fast. You can even do two at a time. What? You can connect two devices at a time and split the screen. With FreeSync Premium Pro, a 32 to 9 aspect ratio and a built-in KVM, you'll be finished in no time. Gaming, I mean. What, what did you think I mean? Get your mind out the gutter and click the link in the description to find out more. So let's face it, mid-tower cases are the most popular on the market. You can typically fit most components in them, even when it comes to larger GPUs, taller CPU coolers, and the biggest power supplies. And this is why Corsair launched the 4000 series of cases, a new lineup that had, I don't know, kind of something for everyone, with a professional looking case, one aimed at airflow, and one aimed at gamers, and those one in kind of the best aesthetics. They tried to simplify things, and for the most part, they did. Then the 5000 series came onto the market with even more space, whether it be for even larger components or for those wanting to go all out with a custom loop. The only issue came with kind of wanting multiple RADs and only really having a couple of different configurations that would work well together. Well, today, today is the launch of the 7000 series, which sets to improve on that even more with a full tower design, space for anything and everything you could ever dream of. And frankly, much more. So first up, let's talk about the 7000 series. Unlike the 4000 and 5000 series, the 7000 series, well, it only consists of two models, the D Airflow, like we've got here today, and the XRGB. I mean, where is the D? Everyone wants the D. In all seriousness, the D Airflow and the XRGB were my favorites, as they offered something above and beyond the 4000D and the 5000D. So as I mentioned, I've got the D Airflow here, which let's kind of address, as always, the elephant in the room. This comes in at $259.99 in the US and $239.99 in the UK. While the XRGB, which will kind of always demand a premium due to the included RGB fans and hub, comes in at $329.99 in the US and $299.99 in the UK. So they're not cheap, but neither are their competitors, like the Dartbase 900 Rev2 from Be Quiet and the Thermaltake Tower 900, which are both kind of priced around the same. There are other cheaper full towers on the market, like the Enthu 719 from Fantex, but in all honesty, kind of looks a bit dated in comparison. So the 7000D Airflow. First up, it's huge, but not the biggest case I've ever seen from Corsair. Like the 4000 and 5000 series cases, it does utilize the space very well, and it isn't large for the sake of being large. And you have to remember, a lot of consumers just prefer having a larger case. And as with its little brothers, it comes in either black or white. So you still, I guess, have a little bit of choice there too. So overall design, I mean, is there any point in me stomping over old ground? It looks the same as the 4000 and the 5000, but is bigger, as you'd expect. I mean, I still really like the triangular design, which makes up most of the case, and it does give obscene amounts of airflow to the internals. Again, you can pull the front panel off, which reveals the magnetic nylon dust filter, which can also be removed. This then allows you to get kind of our first glimpse of the two 140 mm air guide fans. So that's one thing that has changed from the four and the 5,000 series up to this. They're 140 mm fans now instead of 120 mm now, unlike the smaller series, the four millimeter smoke tempered glass panel isn't actually held on by captive thumb screws, but instead is on a set of hinges. The top one is also held in by a screw and once removed, you can take the whole glass panel off. When you close the side, it kind of locks into place and sits flush with the rest of the case. Moving around to the right side, we find a full steel door, but the same hinges and locking screw as the glass side. And there's a large panel to aid ventilation if you're using the side fan mount next to the motherboard. And there is also a magnetic dust filter inside just to keep dust, I guess, to a minimum. On the top, again, nothing really looks new, so to speak, but it's just, well, bigger. There's a ton of ventilation again, and things just look clean and simple. Now, one thing I do like is that under the upper panel and under the magnetic dust filter, there's a toolless fan and radiator mount, which can easily be removed with two thumb screws. 
This just gives those who are kind of using AIOs or a custom loop set of RADs just a bit more space and it just makes things, I don't know, a little bit easier to install, shall we say. Being a bigger case, we expected to see more on the front IO and we've not been disappointed here. There's now four USB 3.0 ports and a type C port. There's also an audio combo jack and our power and reset buttons. On the bottom of the case, there's nothing out of the ordinary. There's four feet which have rubber on them and they can actually be removed. There's a single dust filter which is removable from the side of the case and we can see where the two hard drive cages sit. Being a full tower, things were bound to look a bit bigger as we go around the back with eight ventilated expansion slots and another three for vertical GPU mounting. Corsair also includes a vertical expansion bracket if you're thinking of having two vertical GPUs for instance or just maybe want to do something a little bit different. There's also a single 140mm fan which can be moved up or down, making it perfect for those mounting custom loop components like rads or even reses. So with everything stripped down, we get kind of a first look inside, and for a full tower, while you'd expect it to be big anyway, I kind of feel like they've used the space very well. It's very spacious, and I'm not surprised as it can take EATX motherboards, 450mm GPUs, and CPU coolers up to 190mm in height. It is worth noting that if you are looking to install an EATX motherboard, you'd have to actually remove a panel on the motherboard tray to make it fit. Sadly, when you do remove it, while it does reveal the rubber grommets for cable management, it just kind of looks a little bit bare. It does also get rid of the Corsair branding with that little yellow square that we've seen on previous generation cases. And I've said this time and time again, some people will like it and some will frankly hate it. To use the side fan and rad mounts, you'd have to also remove the other panel too. Now, I'm sure with a bunch of components installed, it wouldn't look as bare but empty. I don't know, it just kind of looks a little bit unfinished. Another odd thing is that you can fit three SSDs on the motherboard tray itself if you were using a mini ITX board. I mean, who in their right mind would do that? It just looks a little bit odd, but I guess they've just given you that extra functionality. Now, when installing your motherboard, there are nine standoffs installed and the middle one is raised for easy installation. I'm gonna say this again, take note other brands who don't currently do this, take note. So going back to the motherboard tray, there's plenty of cable cutouts with two large ones near the top for your EPS connectors and your fan cables and three large cutouts on the PSU shroud for that all important chungus of a USB 3.0 header cable. If water cooling, which is probably the main reason you're actually looking at this case, then you'll find space for a 420 mil or 480 mil rad at the front, 360 mil or 420 at the top, up to 480 at the side next to the motherboard tray and either a 120 mil or 140 mil at the rear. It is worth noting that depending on the thickness of your rads you want to use at the front or the side, you may need to swap the PSU shroud panel for the sled to give you a little bit more room. And just like the 4000 and the 5000 series, this also comes included with the case. You can also fit the newest H170i RGB Elite Capellix 420mm AIO from Corsair, which also releases today with three 140mm ML PWM fans and tons of RGB to light up your system. Sorry guys, they made me say it. In kind of all fairness and equality, other 420mm AIOs will also fit. Fan-wise, as I mentioned, it comes with three 140mm fans with two at the front and one at the rear, but you could actually put four 120mm or three 140mm at the front, three 120 or three 140s at the top, four 120mm at the side, and either a 120mm or 140mm at the rear. Sticking with airflow, you'll find that the PSU shroud has a ton of it, featuring the same consistent triangular design as the rest of the case. There are room for three SSD trays here, but they are sold separately, which I think is a little bit wrong, but they would actually block off some of that ventilation, though I can't really see it making much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. As I mentioned earlier, you can also mount a vertical riser, which again is sold separately, but all of the mounting holes are already in place, and with the main vertical mount having three expansion slots wide, well, it should give you a little bit more airflow than other cases on the market where the GPU is literally kissing the glass panel. Now, going round to the other side, once you open the inner door, which can be locked into place with the included standoff and screw, there's plenty of room for cable management. There's around 25 mil, give or take, of space for extra cables, but there are also two raceways for your EPS cables as well as your 24 pin, GPU cables, and front IO connectors. Corsair also include a bunch of extra Velcro cable ties, though, Gonna be honest, we prefer the eTechnics branded ones, available on store.etechnics.com. There's also a ton of cable loops scattered around for zip tying smaller cables down into place, so you're pretty much covered no matter what. 
For storage, on the rear of the case, there are three SSD trays, which could be moved to the other locations that are there. And there's also two hard drive cages, which are tallest and have thumb screws to allow you to remove them. But to get the cage out that's closest to the front, you'd actually have to remove the second one first or take the side fan rad mount out to be able to actually remove it. For a case of this size, I do kind of see that as a bit of an oversight, to be honest, but I don't know, maybe I'm being too critical. With the cages in, the 7000 series, like the 7000D Airflow, can take PSUs up to 225mm in length, but with the cages out, you can pretty much go nuts. The other standout feature that we've come to expect from Corsair is the included PWM fan hub with six connectors. Three are already in use from the included fans, and the only connectors needed are SATA power and the PWM header that will connect into your motherboard. Obviously, if you go for the XRGB, that controller changes ever so slightly so that you can control your RGB as well. There's also space for one more SSD or hard drive behind the motherboard tray. So I mentioned at the start of this that it's aimed at those who need kind of extra space and being a water cooling nut myself, I'm definitely eager to see how it would all come together with a bunch of rads, reses and blocks. So I'll put it to you guys. If you want to see me do something crazy with this, let me know in the comments section below and I guess I'll pitch the idea to Corsair. Water cooling aside though, what do we think? I mean, yeah. It's huge. I mean, I'm a fan of big cases, so it definitely appeals to me. The beauty of any big case is that you don't have to worry about components fitting or not having enough room for cable management or having that flexibility on where and how your components come together. I mean, there's no restrictions with airflow and you kind of have everything that you'd need, including dual GPU mounts if you really wanted. There's not many cases that have kind of all of these features on the market, at least for a decent price. I'm also glad that they ditched the non-airflow model. Sadly, there is no D, and I know you guys love the D, but it just doesn't fit anywhere. <coughs> Ladies. So you still have choices with the D airflow and the XRGB, and the choice of either black or white. Yes, I mean, it's expensive, and yes, it's big, and it's probably quite a niche product compared to the 4000 and the 5000 series, but it's always nice to kind of have that extra choice. I guess maybe a smaller mini ITX version is next. Hey, Corsair. Now, there are a few things I'd possibly like to see change, so it's not all kind of rainbows and unicorns here. The second hard drive cage access is, I don't know, just it feels like a little bit of an oversight for me. Surely they could have found some kind of a workaround. The other thing is the yellow accents in some area. I've, I mean, I've mentioned this on the 4000 and the 5000 series. Some people won't like it, and I guess I've been critical of this before. It doesn't bother me too much, and I've got to admit it has kind of grown on me, so there is that. It's no kind of real biggie. Lastly, for a case of this size and price, I do think they could have included three extra SSD trays, but I guess maybe I'm being a little bit too picky, but for the price, I kind of feel like, you know, an extra 12 quid's worth of trays wouldn't have gone amiss. So yeah, what do you guys think? Do you agree with the points I've made or am I being overly analytical? I mean, I love the 4000 and the 5000 series cases. I use them myself at home and in the office and the 7000 series just kind of builds on that. I do wonder what ever happened to the 6000 series though. Yeah, again, maybe we'll see something soon. And I honestly would actually love to see a mini ITX or micro ATX version of these cases. Maybe it would be called the 3000 series or the 2000 series. You gotta admit, that would actually be pretty damn cool. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do we like the 7000 series or is it just too big and I don't know, too rich for your blood? Either way, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you did, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.